the amazing Laura. Uh, Laura has been part of our community with Recovery Coach Academy and Recovery Coach Community for about almost the past year. And she's been doing some amazing work with boundaries. And we just think it should be shared wider than just in our little community of students in the background. So Laura, thank you for taking the time. Uh, time differences and all. Please come on in, share some of your great lived experience, professional boundaries experience, and I'm sure you'll throw a bit of recovery coaching in there. So over to you. Come on in, Laura. Thank you, Nita. Thank you so much. I am so happy to be here and to be sharing about something that is really important to me. And I think um, most everybody in the world could use. So um, I, just a little bit about myself. I am a college instructor. I teach public speaking and human communication. So I'm an educator. I'm a facilitator. I do meditation workshops and I'm an artist, a painter. I'm a daughter. I'm an aunt. I'm a sister. I'm a cat mom. I'm a partner. I'm a Scorpio. I'm a four on the Enneagram. I'm a listener and I'm a person in long-term recovery, most importantly and boundaries, boundaries, that simple little thing that can be so challenging. Boundaries is what empowered me to create my life authentically after um, going through treatment for substance use disorder, uh, toxic relationships, really just kind of um, general life trauma. Um, but I was able to create my life from the roots up with boundaries and they really kind of became like a pathway of recovery for me and and they still are very much that i'm still learning about boundaries i think um, as we go through life we're always learning how to improve uh, how to open up more how to close certain doors and uh, let the oxygen in and the fire in um, but not get trampled so much in this life so boundaries for me are like holding the tension between authenticity and attachment. So that that was really kind of the, the ground that I was working with long ago when I first started with boundaries in 2007. And that's largely what I, I'm still working through. So that that tension between authenticity being my real true self and my attachments, which, you know, in the past were whatever they were, and we always have some kind of attachment. So it's a progressive work for us. That's my evolution, I think, is to let go and let go of those attachments so I have healthier boundaries. So it's just a little bit about me and um, also a recovery coach. Did I mention that? So I worked with Recovery Coach Academy, Nita and Kalise, and CCAR RCA in the UK, and just really a fantastic training program. And uh, it has just been such a mind-blowing experience to um, work with people who are going through uh, recovery and who are leading the recovery movement uh, around the world. And so I'm just really excited to be able to share um, what really is my passion, um, which is boundaries. All right. So for this workshop, um, what, no matter where you are uh, in your life, meaning if you are in recovery, if you're a recovery coach, if you're interested in learning more about boundaries, this is a good workshop for you. I probably will refer uh, a lot to boundaries in recovery specifically, but I really believe that every person is in recovery from something. All right. So I want you to just hold an intention for yourself as you listen today to the, the information I have for you on boundaries and uh, to open yourself up to learning more about how you might be able to use boundaries, whether that's for your personal life or maybe for people that you work with. Maybe you're, um, if somebody's a counselor or a therapist or a coach or um, a parent or a grandparent or, or whatever, boundaries are really good to, to learn more about. Um, also, you know, stuff may come up for you personally uh, in this, even though this is, this is a simple informative workshop, stuff can always come up. So. Um, just remember that we're here together. This is a safe space. And uh, just keep in mind to listen to ways to apply boundaries um, in both your personal and if you have a professional life. All right. So, again, thank you for being here.
I want to start with a question to you. Why? And I encourage you to use the chat function here since we're live streaming. Uh, if you would type in the chat um, why boundaries are important for you, uh, maybe why boundaries are important for anybody in recovery. Just your thoughts on this. Why are boundaries important for you or why they're important for people in recovery? And as some messages come through, I'll just share those. Boundaries help save our family. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I think they, they saved mine too. Do you want to speak any more about that? Hang on. There you go. Um, I just think that when I learned how to set boundaries in life, it didn't mean that I wasn't going to help my family or do things. It just meant that I had the clarity to be aware of all the possible outcomes and know what I could live with. Mm, yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Being aware of the outcomes and knowing what you could live with. I think that is so wise. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Beautiful. Clarity about who I am. Mary Malay. Hi, Mary. Hi. Uh, yeah. You want to, you want to, you want to speak on that, Mary? Anything you want to offer on that? Thank you. Go ahead. Hi, Laura. Um, Hi. And everybody. And everybody. Um, <clears throat> my family is going through a huge change. And for me, it's about studying the patterns that have been in place and um, be part of the change that is going on and yet really... Um, I don't know if it was protective, but I don't want to replay the same roles over and over again. So that's why I thought it would be helpful to come here. So I knew how, I mean, I found myself blocking people on my phone and I thought, well, this is a great place to come. <laughs> Absolutely, wonderful. Well, thank you. Thank you for your, for your comment and your share. Yeah, so Colin, uh, respecting myself and others' space. Do you want to speak to that for a quick moment? Go ahead, Colin. Um, so I think it, it comes around, or it, comes, it came about for me in relation to my recovery. Um, my boundaries, um, sadly had been violated quite quite early on in life and um, so I struggled with, with with kind of setting boundaries on known different boundaries um, and it only kind of as I say came came about or came up when I started doing my 12 step work um, and how important they are to put those things in place to protect yourself and others. Absolutely yeah very important thank you for sharing that yeah, um, and that space is so, so important to protect as well. And so that we have a really healthy shared space and those <clears throat> very clear, direct, uh, healthy boundaries are, are so important to, to set and to keep. So in this workshop, we're gonna talk about both of those, setting the boundaries and how to make sure that we are setting appropriate consequences for those boundaries so that we're protecting our space, the other space, and there's that mutual respect that's happening. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, so people don't take advantage. Thank you. And um, supports the client. And as a substance abuse counselor with lived experience, it is important to protect my own recovery. And Nita, yeah, you want to speak on that? There you go. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, sorry, I had some problems with the audio, but yeah, as I experience it day by day in my work, uh, I work in a hospital and I also have a private consultation as a substance use counselor and recovery coach. Sorry, uh, it's very important for me that uh, I set my boundaries because I often feel extremely exhausted in the evening and I often uh, experience that, yeah, I, I slip into my own recovery during consultation. 
So I, I have to keep a focus on that, uh, especially that uh, I part of, I'm part of the recovery communities in Hungary and it often overlaps is, you know, with my uh, clientele here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it, every day I have to pay attention to uh, focus on this. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's really important in what you said, because, you know, as recovery coaches or counselors or whatever role we may be in, it's always important to manage our own stuff, to take care of to our stuff. And of course, we are learning still as we're progressing and evolving in our own recovery, too. So, yeah, that's very insightful. All right. Thank you. Well, I want to encourage you to all continue using the chat while we're here. And if there's just something that comes up and you want to um, put it in the chat. That would be lovely. Um, hopefully at the end, we'll have time to come back to uh, some Q&A. So I'm going to share my screen so we can move forward with our, with the actual um, information content. And excuse me while I get this to where it needs to be. There we go. Okay, if you need to move your um, gallery view boxes around so you can see the screen, please do that. All right, so uh, really important for, for us to understand that at, its, at the core, boundaries is, uh, are, excuse me, are about this. It is okay to say no, and no being a complete sentence. You've probably heard that before. It's also okay to say yes when we mean it. All right, so uh, for people in, in recovery, you know, we know that boundaries are especially important, and we need to let others know very clearly what we will tolerate and what we will not tolerate in our recovery journeys, in our lives, in our personal relationships, in the workplace, in our families, etc. So, you know, for some people, we have to learn how to communicate our, or we do learn how to communicate our boundaries um, when we're learning how to live differently, whether that's in treatment or in recovery, um, maybe after a divorce or a death or, or anything really um you know we have to make sure that we're practicing patience and kindness and compassion with ourselves so an understanding that we're uh, learning newly how to communicate boundaries is really important so to practice that that gentleness and self-care is really important so i just want to make sure um i iterate that so uh, a lot of us may come from families where boundaries weren't discussed. So boundaries may be brand new to people and people sometimes take offense when we start setting boundaries, especially if we never have done that before. Um, so we might get met with some kind of resistance. And so we need to work our way through that or soften to that. Um, yeah, so uh, maybe we come from codependent relationships where those lines of you and me were very blurry, if existent at all. So maybe these are some of the reasons too that uh, it's important to identify, develop, establish, and protect and enforce our boundaries. So simply put, boundaries are where you end and others begin, right? And here I think is really important this quote from Tate Adams who, who wrote a whole book on boundaries, whether in early recovery or sober many years, it becomes clear that just you know, doing without whatever um, is not enough, that we need something more to live a happy and purposeful life. And I really believe that these very clear definitions of where I end and you begin boundaries are, are, are what are needed. So boundaries can be kind of like guidelines or rules or limits that a person creates to identify for themselves and then for others what are reasonable, safe, and permissible ways for people to behave around them and how they will respond when someone steps outside of those limits because we all know that we all step outside of those limits, all right? Um, so boundaries involve really kind of a, a two-part process. You create the boundary and establish the consequence of a boundary violation and you get to decide the consequences. When you're setting the boundary, you decide what happens, you know, like Nitha was saying earlier. All right. So we could go by a, a very general definition, too, of a boundary, which is rules 
that set limits on what is and is not acceptable in a relationship. <clears throat> Excuse me. So rules that set limits on what is acceptable and what is not acceptable in a relationship. So kind of like this property line here in the image um, or even a no trespassing sign. Um, this is this little plaque here on these bricks. This is very clear. It's a very clear boundary that carries a consequence for violating it. Permission revocable at will. We don't have these kinds of uh, plaques walking around with us on our person, right? Maybe in a workplace, we could maybe put something up if that was allowed. But generally speaking, it's not something that people can readily understand. So we have to learn how to teach people or how to communicate our own boundaries with other people. Um, consequences are, you know, likewise are infrequently and inconsistently enforced. So we take that responsibility uh, very seriously when we're setting boundaries. We, we understand that there will be consequences. We understand that there are a variety of outcomes that could fall from setting boundaries and we have to be willing to accept whatever those are. So every one of us, every person gets to choose what we will and won't allow in our space, whether that is um, physical space or emotional space or work space or home space, etc. We're going to go through some of that here in just a few minutes. So in recovery, we learn that Boundaries do change over time, right? Like in early recovery, we may have, or a person may have a, a very clear boundary where they have, maybe they've set a curfew even for themselves. I know I did, it's like, okay, I'm not going to go out of my house after a certain time because I knew, I knew that I needed to have that boundary. So, um, and then, you know, over a month or two, after a month or two, then that boundary was, was extended and then eventually lifted, you know, it was safe. I felt safe. Um, I felt like I could I could trust myself and etc. So those boundaries change over time. And of course, you know, like in a relationship with another person, we set certain boundaries in the beginning of that relationship. And as we get to know that person and trust that person, it's the same thing. You know, boundaries dissolve, move back a little bit over time. All right. And that's that's that gradual movement is really important too, I think. So if you're working with um, clients who are new in recovery or new, maybe just to boundaries, then keep that in mind as well. Cause I think that's really important. Be, um, be cognizant, be mindful about making sure that, that those people know once you set a boundary, it, it's not forever. It doesn't have to be forever. Boundaries change. All right. As do we. So oftentimes when we when we are first setting boundaries, we find um, a sweet spot between different pieces of our lives. And one of the sweet spots that I talked about earlier, uh, attachment and authenticity. Another one is vulnerability and protection. I want to stop sharing my screen for a second. So um, that that line or that tension between vulnerability and protection is really uh, important because we we want to self-protect we need to self-protect sometimes right but we don't want to be so closed off that we don't let anybody in that we don't have anybody who can um who can, we can be intimate with that we can tell things and share things and have a confidant right so it's important to make sure that you try to discover what your sweet spot is in those different uh, groups of opposites so you know, just think about maybe what your sweet spots are. If anybody wants to put anything about their sweet spots in the chat that we can come back to later, um, certainly do that, please. All right, um, so good. Well, let's go then to um, talking about some different kinds of boundaries. So I'll come back to sharing my screen. Hi, Bianca. There we go. So these different types of boundaries. <clears throat> so as you can see, I'm going to start on the right, right, with the unhealthy boundaries, the very rigid. So you can see that there are three types of, of unhealthy boundaries and only one type of healthy boundaries. All right. So 
I think I like this image. So unhealthy boundaries when we're when we're overly rigid. Um, this is when we're not letting anything in hardly at all. Maybe the person with unhealthy boundaries has shut herself off to the world around her, saying no to all things. All right, bad things, good things, everything. All right, so this is when we're saying no to the good things in life too. We have just put the proverbial brick wall around ourselves. Guess what? This person is usually isolated and lonely. Um, and really it falls at the expense of being in control. And oftentimes, you know, that's um that can be an illusion. It can be a very dangerous trap too. I know we we need to have some sense of control in our lives. I get that, but we can have that and have healthy boundaries instead of unhealthy boundaries. So um, we also have the very loose or porous boundaries um, in our lives. And this is when the person really, like for example, can't say no to anybody. And instead they say yes so often that the feelings that come are being overwhelmed, uh, overworked, out of control, unhappy about their lives, whether it's personal, professional, or a combination. People with very loose or porous boundaries are also afraid of saying no, usually because they don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I mean, a lot of people, whether in ha having gone through treatment or not, who are in recovery or not, um, are people pleasers. And um, some of us are recovering from being people pleasers too. So, and we often have looser porous boundaries when we're, when we're operating out of that kind of mindset and body set. And when we're really um, not practiced at saying no to things that we really don't want to do. And I mean, I've, I've done that and every once in a while I do that, but I've gotten really good at saying no thank you to a lot of things in my life and meaning it. Um, and you know, just for example, at work, you know, maybe somebody, like a personal example, my, um, I work at a college and my dean asked me, would I like to participate in, you know, XYZ committee? And while it's, it seemed like it might be a really good move for me if I wanted to be around a lot of people and go to a lot of extra meetings and maybe work an extra hour or two every couple of weeks. That was not something that I was interested in doing at the time. Maybe if I had just started at this place and whatever, but it, I felt very confident and very um, good and assertive in saying no, thank you. And um, you know, I have uh, we all have people in our lives who who are wanting to not hurt anybody or not disappoint anyone. All right, so. Um, this is when we have unhealthy boundaries that are too loose or too porous. We let too much in and we leak out all over the place. And oftentimes when we keep putting ourselves out there over and over again, saying yes to all of these things, we end up being exhausted and not having any time. Kind of like the next one that we're going to talk about here, the limited or non-existent. And these are, you know, people that they just, they just don't have it in them really to say no at all. So they are expert people pleasers. And they're also probably um, somehow attached to a lot of different things and people. So whether that means that they are, you know, the quintessential workaholic or whatever that may be, um, it's still an unhealthy boundary. You know, we, we do these things and, and, don't set boundaries because of often the way we were raised. This is this is what was modeled to us. Or uh, we have unrealistic expectations, or maybe somebody else has placed those expectations upon us. And I think you know women in particular um, might resonate with this because we're told to you know, well maybe not so much anymore. But I know I've I've met people I've met females who have said, gosh, you know, well, this is how it was modeled in my house. This is how my mom did it. This is how my sister did it. All right. They didn't have any boundaries. So um, you, you can change that for yourself, right? End that cycle in your bloodline and start to set healthy boundaries. And healthy boundaries, this is what we want. All right. So um, the clear little dotted lines here are little dots that form the line around the person 
obviously letting air in and letting air out, letting light in and letting light out, all right? Um, I like that. It's green, green for go, all right? We are assertive. We are directly communicating our boundaries with people. This is where the person is saying yes and meaning it, uh, saying yes to things that, that make her feel good about herself and a clear no to the things that could potentially make her feel bad about herself, all right? regardless of how happy it may make somebody else. And those are the consequences we need to live with, especially if we're talking about um, if we're dealing with a recovery coaching client or we're in recovery ourselves. So um, if you if you have a, I forgot to tell you to have a pen and, or pencil and paper handy, uh, but you can do it after the session anyway. But if you have a piece of paper and something to write with, just quickly, you know, think about one relationship in your life that you have right now, just one. This can be the, the relationship you have with yourself, but one relationship, what kind of boundaries do you have with this person? And draw that according to, I'll put it back up in just a second, draw that according to those little diagrams that I just showed to you. Um, I think that might be really important to start exploring a little bit about what your boundaries could be with this person. Like I said, this can be with yourself. So unhealthy boundaries, totally rigid, unhealthy, loose or porous, unhealthy, limited or non-existent, and the healthy boundaries. Okay. All right. Well, next, well, let me see. Why don't you, while you're doing that, I'm going to stop share again. Sorry. I'm um, just looking at the chat for a quick sec. Sometimes we do go from an extreme to another. Absolutely, we do. People pleaser looking for validation. Yes. Having the confidence to set boundaries and say no to people or situation. Allow me to say yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, being a perfectionist. Yep. And there are like some things in my life where I'm a perfectionist about and some things that I could give a flip. It's really weird how, you know, vacillating between those two sometimes, um, just depending on like the context that I'm in. Really interesting. All right, good. Well, maybe we can come back to some of these um, after. Yeah, so it's like I, I don't remember growing up with, with a lot of healthy boundaries in my household. Um, I had a, my mom and my dad really was um, absentee dad for most of my life after age nine. And um, actually one of the first... Uh, emotional boundaries that I set in my life was when I was probably 13 or so and my dad would like come home on uh, a weekend out of the month to visit he worked away um, and like out of town like five hours away and so he'd come home like once uh, every so often on a weekend and the emotional boundary that I set you know I would wait for him to come home kind of thing and he would be late or he would come the next day or whatever. And so, you know, I just kind of, I set a very rigid boundary. And when I was, when I was young and with him saying, I'm just going to cut myself off from this person because it hurts too much. It hurts too much, you know? And um, definitely when we make that kind of a rigid boundary in our lives, it, it certainly flavors a lot of our other relationships. Right. But, you know, as I, grew and evolved and um, had other healthy friendships and whatnot, that changed. And I was able to gradually become uh, more healthy with how I set those boundaries. So I went from a red to the orange, to the yellow, and eventually back to the green. It just it takes some time. All right, so <clears throat> we'll move on from that. We'll come back to see if anybody has anything they wanna share about that at the end. So let's look at some of these areas for boundaries um, 
boundary consideration. So we have like two basic categories. We have internal boundaries, which is the, like that emotional boundary that I just gave you an example of with my dad, and external boundaries. So uh, we'll just take a little bit of um, look through these for a few minutes. And I'm um, just looking at the list over here. We have self-regulation, uh, self-efficacy, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, material, and the T&E is about time and energy. So we talked a little bit about um, space, so that can fall into that physical um, component there. So we want to, you know, how do we use boundaries for self-regulation? Well, I use boundaries for self-regulation for, in this way, um, I make sure that I do like a check with myself on the boundaries that I've set to make sure, first of all, that um, the boundary is a healthy boundary and that I am able to still do what it is I need to do, whether that's in my personal relationship, whether that's for my recovery or in my work environment that I am self-regulating. So that I am maybe setting a time limit even so we can combine it with the T&E boundary, um, setting a time limit on a task that I may have. All right. So I'm self-regulating that way. All right. And all of these can really be practiced under the the umbrella of self-efficacy. I believe that that's what healthy boundaries ultimately do, especially for people who um, maybe are new to boundaries that they help establish that self-efficacy. And that's really important for anyone in recovery from anything that we have that autonomy and that we're able to um, make, make happen our own self-regulation too. So those work hand in hand. So those physical boundaries, you know, what kind of boundaries do we have around our space? Well, um, I can give you an example from my job that I am, you know, fortunate enough to have like my own office and it's like a 12 by 12 space and it has a little tiny rectangle window on the door. I don't have any other other windows, but physical space for me is really important. I get really claustrophobic easily and um, noise as well. Uh, if there's a lot of noise all the time. Um, I have problems focusing, concentrating. So a physical boundary I set for myself is to I'll have my door open for about the first hour, hour and a half I'm at work, and then I close it. And I work for however long, an hour, I get up and take a break or whatever. But having those little pieces of time, blocks of time and space that I can have for my physical environment to myself, where I can concentrate and, and complete tasks or whatever, that's really important. Also, physical boundaries will include us, um, you know, letting people into our homes. You know, especially in early recovery, that was really important for me. I, I needed to be very clear on who I allowed into my home um, until I moved away. <laughs> so I didn't have any of those people anymore around me. But that was really important for me. Um, so maybe physical space with um, a romantic partner or a friend, too, might be something important that you can discuss. And, I mean, really, it kind of goes back to... Um, you know, closing the door, like I just said, it's it's not like actually closing the door, but we can imagine that and say, okay, well, where's, where's my door? Where's my threshold? And making sure that, you know, whatever you're comfortable with, that's what you state as your boundary. You make sure that you're clear with that line with people. Mental boundaries, um, what are the thoughts that are coming in? You know, what are you allowing in to your mind? This can also be about what your um, and I know thoughts come unbidden, you know, we can't control our thoughts, but that's where meditation comes in. That certainly is helpful um, so that we, so that thoughts arise and thoughts go through. So we don't get attached to them. It's simply a thought. Same with our feelings, same with our emotions. But also mental boundaries can be about what we read, shows and movies that we watch and the material that we consume, so to speak. That's really important to have boundaries around too. I have, um, like I said, I teach human communication and one of the, the big pieces of that class is around media because it's such a factor, you know, in modern life. And uh, so I encourage my students to take a week long media fast with me where we don't consume any kind of news. 
And for some people, that's really easy. And for some people, it's just not easy at all. I mean, it's like, it is, it's like a drug to them. They have to have that fix. But if that is something, the news or anything else in the media, uh, is something that uh, is a negative factor, an unhealthy part of life for you, then set a boundary around that. It's very, um, make it very clear. You know, it is uh, something that, that you get to choose for yourself. I choose that too. I've to the point right now in my life where um, watching the news is just a no go for me. I just can't. I have one little, you know, bit of news uh, time in the morning for myself, and that's it. And that's really just to stay current. So um, I can talk with my students about things. But um, if that's something that, that works for you, yeah, because it it I could tell it was making my blood pressure go up, my my nervous system would be like in shambles after 20 minutes after reading and, and watching the news so just had to stop that and of course of course this is important if we're in recovery too when we're in recovery all right so material boundaries are those um physical possessions those objects your car your money your house um your furniture those kinds of things so early in recovery for people um, or any time in recovery, really there, there may be somebody who comes along and says, uh, you know, I really need to borrow your car. I need to go do X, Y, Z. Well, that's up to you. If you trust that person to loan them your car, great. But if you really don't, and they're just really desperate, drive them yourself if that's possible. I mean, there are obviously all middle grounds here that we can, we can find in setting boundaries. So it doesn't have to be an either or. And really, honestly, most things in life are both and when we really look at it. There are some either ors, yes, but both and um, just really, I think, is is a contemplative, meditative way to live life and understanding that we don't have to work from one extreme or the other. That was really important for me. Uh, I think that really helps get a handle on setting boundaries. So. Um, I was an extremist and always, it was always either this or that. And then, you know, once out of treatment and I started learning more about uh, meditation and continuing to learn more about boundaries, that really helped me to understand, oh, okay, well, this is both and, and so I can do this and do that. All right. So um, a lot of walls inside of myself fell down once I started practicing that both end way of living. But anyway, getting back to the material, you get to choose what you what you loan and what you give and who you let sleep on your couch and uh, those kinds of things. Spiritual, of course, we all get to believe what we want to believe and we don't have to enforce or convert or anything like that. So um, it's like if, if somebody has gone through AA or NA and that person meets up with someone who is like, thinking both of those groups are cults, then, okay, fine. That person can believe that they're a cult and this other person can believe, nope, NA really worked for me. Okay, so we all get to choose that for ourselves. And we can have great open conversations about these things too, is how we learn and grow. But we can set boundaries around that, um, around practicing our own spirituality. And then of course, uh, emotional, we kind of talked about that, or I kind of talked about that a little while ago. Um, but emotional boundaries are really important internal boundaries to have. And how do you want to feel? I know emotions are, are fleeting things. They're not permanent. They're not who I am. They're not my identity. Neither are my thoughts. But what kind of boundaries might we set around our emotional lives? Maybe if anybody wants to put anything in the chat about that, um, drop that in there. And, you know, if there are any other areas of your life that may need some boundary attention, uh, put that in the chat if you're, if you want to, and we'll come, come to that here in just a little bit after we finish up. All right. So these are some of the, the areas for boundary consideration. And, um, we also have some barriers to boundaries, uh, to setting boundaries. Let me get rid of that little control up there. Um, so some of those reasons, I mentioned this earlier, maybe you've never set a boundary before. 
All right. That certainly could be a barrier. It could also be an excitement say, oh my gosh, I get to do this for the first time. All right, great. So, um, but it can promote some anxiety and fear, but just understand um, that boundaries are good things. They're good things. They're not bad things. They help us define our relationships. They help us learn about who we are and they help us um, have a better relationship with ourselves. They can also promote, of course, physical, emotional, mental safety. So um, sometimes though, when we're, when we have a barrier and maybe we've never set a boundary before, um, maybe we think that somebody's going to be angry with us and maybe somehow our safety will be threatened if we set a boundary. That may be a very real scenario for people. So how do we handle that? Fear, just basic fear um, around setting a boundary. Well, you know, if I set this boundary with my friend that I can't go out on Friday nights or whatever, um, or I don't want to go to this restaurant because they serve, you know, they have a full open bar or whatever, then, you know, what is the consequence you're willing to set? Maybe there's a compromise. Maybe say, you cook dinner and have the friend come over instead. Because I think some of the fear for people, I know for myself early on in boundaries, it was this person's not going to like me anymore. They're not going to want to be my friend. Um, but 99% of the time that did not happen. The person understood when I was very clear um, with my boundary. And it can also be um, a barrier could be guilt and shame that we, we feel guilty for taking care of ourselves. We feel shamed for taking care of ourselves. And I know for some that might sound crazy, ridiculous, but for some it's gonna be crazy true. Um, because we, we learn and taught and we have these expectations that, no, you know, you're, you're here for me. Well, now I need to take care of myself first. And that starts with setting good, healthy boundaries. All right, so we'll go to the next. Um, so the importance of boundaries in recovery, uh, there are many more than just these three, but it does really kind of fall on practicing that self-care and self-respect. So to practice self-care and self-respect, that simple act of saying no, you know, it can be very challenging to say no um, in recovery from trauma or substance use or um, anything else, because we do, we want to be accepted by others, but you might know you need to say no in some situations. So boundaries are a way that you can help yourself do that. So learning that powerful response of no, thank you. And we can say no and be kind about it, right? Um, you know, is a major step in taking care of yourself and, and practicing self-respect, redefining your worth even. You know, I know a lot of people, especially people in recovery might have um, worth issues. Another importance is to be able to communicate effectively what your actual real needs are. Instead of kind of dancing around what your, what your needs are, then say what they are. Just be open and honest with people. I know that can be terrifying. It makes us vulnerable when we're communicating our needs. I was a, a sensitive child, a sensitive adult woman. Um, and, you know, I had four older siblings. And so, of course, my parents were like, whatever, by the time I came around. But it was, um, you know, my siblings, the siblings do, made fun of me. I mean, I made fun of them too, but it was, um, I always felt like they picked on me extra hard, you know, because I was baby girl. And so it was difficult for me to learn as a, um, like in my twenties, how to communicate my needs um, first of all, because uh, of those experiences, but also because being the youngest, you know, I had people kind of taking care of me a lot. I mean, I was kind of spoiled, still kind of am. Um, but it was it was different after I went through treatment because it was like learning how to communicate all over again when I was really focused on um, communicating my needs and and being real with people in my life. This is what I need. All right, so establishing boundaries definitely can help us move through uh, some of those murky waters of uh, needs communication, those strong emotions that come along with those needs as well. 
is that's why it's so important to um, you know construct a, and create space that is conducive for that something that's really a healthy safe uh, trusting place and then um, the third importance that we'll talk about today in the workshop is creating time and space for healthy interaction so you know trauma and PTSD can cause people to withdraw or lash out so we can actually learn how to time our conflict and that might sound really foreign to people but uh, time and conflict if I'm walking out of the door to go to work in the morning and my partner says to me you know really upset that you didn't take the trash out or whatever um, I can't really talk about this now I'm about to be late for work can we talk about it when I get home you know not to put that person off but just I want to talk about this but I, I can't right now so if we can then then time that conflict accordingly so that we can create a um, a healthy environment for the conversation to be had all right so really important there all right so otherwise make make time for those meaningful conversations in life all right and some <clears throat> excuse me some pro tips for boundaries that I have for you today when we're setting boundaries then be able to identify what the emotions are that are associated with the boundary that you're setting that can be really important identify any sobriety risk factors that you may have going on with this situation in setting the boundary <clears throat> yes sobriety is not just abstinence it is um, an evolution it is learning um, how to live and communicate and and breathe and love and play and all of those things in a healthy way so um, we can learn how to set clear boundaries and enforce them um, set those appropriate consequences. I'll talk about that briefly. You know, <clears throat> if someone violates my um, closed door boundary in my workspace, for example, they, if I happen to leave the door unlocked and they just barge into my office, you know, I'm not going to have a harsh consequence for them, tell them I'm never speaking to them again or we're not going to be friends or, or, you know, something immature like that. But I will tell them, I closed my door for a reason and I would appreciate if you would knock before before you enter um, just something as easy and simple as that and I know for some people that's like oh, I can't say that yes you can yes you can you can say it with kindness remain accountable that's really important um, remain accountable for your boundaries and for honoring and respecting other people's boundaries you know in <clears throat> um, when we're dealing with people in recovery from trauma substance etc it is really important to be mindful that they might have a set of boundaries that um, you've never seen or heard before because it's it's that's what they need all right so respect be respectful and ask questions to find out maybe what those boundaries are remember that you choose what and who and when and where um, bad grammar but comes through your gate like the image here you get to open and close your gate. Yes, there's oxygen coming in, there's light coming in, um, but you're not gonna just let people freely walk in and out all the time. And the <clears throat> wonderful Brene Brown said, nothing is sustainable without boundaries. I tend to agree. So I have a deep dive in boundaries that <clears throat> is gonna begin soon, um, probably in September. So if you're interested in that, this is about learning to say yes and no and mean it, and building your self-confidence, et cetera. And I'd love for you to contact me. I think Khalees already dropped something in the chat about that. <coughs> Excuse me. And then um, this is kind of what that setup is for the deep dive. It's five weeks. We meet for an hour a week through Zoom, and I will help you uh, discern and define what your boundaries are or help you work with other people's boundaries or if you work with recoveries um, then I can help you with that as well I'll give you a safe space to practice um, etc you can read that you can contact me through this email you can go to my website 
And then I also have a one-to-one -one coaching, which is um, what I call an artful and soulful empowerment experience. And I guide you with art and um, other kinds of practices to help you live into your boundaries, your best recovery from whatever you may be going through or have gone through, or maybe you're ready for um, something to grow differently in your life. Maybe you need to envision a different garden for yourself that is your life, that is your soul. So if you're interested in that, I certainly love to have you join me so you can sign up for that um, to learn more about it on my website as well. So, <clears throat> excuse me, let's see what we have here in the chat and um, we'll go from there. Okay, let me find where I was here. So bounce between <clears throat> people pleasing and realizing I'm doing it again and then going completely. Yes, till I, till I get that. Um, <laughs> yeah, because it's like we bounce between that green counter boundary and the red counter boundary in, in that people pleasing mode, right? It's so difficult to navigate. But when we learn that, that we have a right to protect ourselves, we have a right to uh, allow ourselves to be however, however vulnerable we want to be, um, and that we can take care of ourselves by making sure that we are saying what we really mean and being authentic. I think that's what authenticity is, a good definition of it anyway, I think. Um, then maybe that people pleasing will dissolve I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. Sometimes boundaries are really super difficult <clears throat> because we're so used to that. We're so used to people pleasing. But how much people pleasing are we going to do in our lives? When is that people? When is that person going to be me? You know, when can I take care of myself? So when, especially, you know, I hate to keep saying especially, but when we're moving through recovery of some sort, we need to make sure that that self-care is the priority. And if somebody gets disappointed because we're not practicing our usual people pleasing, it's gonna have to be too bad. You're gonna have to learn to, to live with those consequences. And I know that's not easy. I know, I know it's not. Uh, yes, we're all still learning. Thank you, Colin, I am too. Every day, every day. <laughs> Rejection can be a protection, absolutely, yes. And Barry, I think, is gone, but um, I think that's definitely true. Yes, yes, yes. I'm often like my codependency is flaring up. I got to, yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, once we start, once we start with those boundaries, the codependency just shows itself everywhere, right? It's like, oh my gosh, I can see it very clearly. Yeah, I love that. I think that that's, um, that's brilliant. Yes. Okay, and let's see what else we have. Fear of the consequences of setting boundaries stopped me from doing it for so long. I'm so glad I learned how to do this and continue to revisit this and practice it. It's not easy. No, no, it is not easy. Not at all, not at all. But those blessed consequences, you know, we do. We have to deal with those too. And we could put boundaries around the consequences as well. We can learn how to do that. Okay, I'll deal with this one consequence right now. And then five minutes later, when the next consequence comes along, I'll deal with that one and so on and so forth. You know, that's what we have to do. And if, you know, again, if we're working with recoveries um, in our work, then sure, we have to make sure we're ready to deal with those consequences. Excellent. Ah, oh, thanks, Khalees. But it was easy. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be here for sure. All right. Um, well, thank you, too, for putting those links in there in the chat. Does anybody have um, anything they would like to share before we go? Maybe if somebody like drew uh, that boundary issue with one person, if anybody wants to give a, a little quick share, and we have like a few minutes left. That might be too vulnerable for you. I understand that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right. Well, I'll share one with you. I have, um, <clears throat> oh my Lord. Okay. I'll tell you this one. I went on a trip with my 
oldest sister, she's 12 years older than me, to see our brother recently. And I love my sister. I really do. Uh, she can just be a little bit of a pain sometimes. But she um, started like asking me all kinds of questions about my work, about recovery coaching and whatnot. And I was, you know, gladly answering them. But then 30 minutes later, she was still asking me questions. And it's like, okay, that I can't, can't do this anymore. I, I need a break. You know, I'm an introvert. You know this about me. You're an introvert. Why are we having this conversation? But having just put that little time frame on the time deadline on, on our conversation really helped a lot. And I do that with people at work too. And my, my close colleagues know that, you know, I can do about 10 minutes if it's more than three people in a conversation and then I'm out. I have to take a break because it's just, it's too much. I'm a sensitive and it's just too much coming in, right? So be mindful of that too. If you're working with people in recovery, because they might be sensitive as well and they might get quickly overloaded and maybe they don't know how to set a boundary. So maybe you can learn more for them as well. If your boundaries seem to be pretty healthy, then maybe you can help other people. Yeah. Anybody have any anything they would like to offer before we go? No. Good. Thank you so much, Laura. You're just uh you do light up the room every time we're in that room with you, whether it be on Zoom or wherever. And I am so grateful that I've learned a lot from you and happy we can share a little bit of that with other people. So yeah, yeah, really much appreciate it. And the boundaries are key to what we do professionally, personally, even in our crazy mother-daughter relationship and household at the moment, all the time. So yeah, please, if you've got any questions about what Laura does, reach out to her. If you have any questions about Favor UK, Recovery Coach Academy, please just ask. We want this to be a ripple effect and help as many people as we possible and share this information. And I am sure we will have Laura back for some more part two, three, four, and five workshops because I just think all we can learn about boundaries is good and healthy boundaries really make healthy relationships. So thank you so much, Laura. And um, thank yeah, you. I know we're different time zones to you, so I appreciate your <laughs> working with us on time zones too. But oh, yeah. thank boundaries you. Boundaries are thank global. You. It doesn't matter where you are, a bit like recovery is global, you know? That's right. So, yeah, That's right. Super. Great. Thank, Thank you, you all for joining us. Have a lovely evening. Mark, it's great to see your little face there. So yeah. <laughs> cool. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.